night, dancing the night away on a conga line in Manhattan. What else do you need to know? What do you need to know that you don't already know? All right, let's take a call on the Savage Nation. T on WABC, fire away. What's your opinion on what? In early 1945, Adolf Hitler knew the war was lost, let, but because of his ego and his ideology, he let thousands of German soldiers and civilians get killed for a lost war. What is the difference between that and today when evidence has been presented that one of the suicide bombers or attackers was a so-called refugee and the President of the United States still allows and wants these migrants to come into the country to put... Oh, wait, wait, you're mixing two stories together. How does that relate to Hitler knowing the war was lost? Who, who knows the war is what war is lost? No, no. We know the war is lost or ISIS knows the war is lost? It's about, it is about the leader of a country. Hitler was the leader of his people. Obama is the leader of the United States of America. And allowing, because of his ego and his ideology, allowing his people to potentially get hurt and killed. Well, I understand that, but it doesn't mean the war is lost. It means that Obama is lost to reality. That's what it means. Reality. It means that we have a de deranged lunatic in the White House. That's what it means. With an indifferent first lady. That's what it means. An embarrassment to the, to the presidency, in this man's opinion. But where is the Republican Party saying this? Where, where is the Republican candidate say, stay, saying the president's nuts? Where? Have you read Government Zero? No, no strategy against ISIS. Have you seen that chapter? I have not, sir. You're getting a copy. Stay on the line. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. I have some news for you. A little personal news. This is something to surely going to get my competitors very angry. I'm sorry to tell you this, but Government Zero has now gone into a fifth printing in two weeks. They have printed 181,000 copies. I'm very sorry to report that to all of my progressive friends at Fox News in particular, that you do not control the media. You do not control the conservative media. You do not at all scare me. You're just another outlet, as am I. Back with more news on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. to do that. Let Fredo take care of some Mickey Mouse nightclub somewhere. I can handle things. I'm smart. Not like everybody says. Like dumb. I'm smart and I want the steps. Obama's 2015 golf and family vacations cost taxpayers $3.115.688 on airfare alone. Daily caller. President Obama, Fredo, racked up quite a few frequent flyer miles in 2015. A Tuesday report from Judicial Watch claims that President Frito took three unnecessary golf and family vacations this past year and American taxpayers footed the bill. According to the new information, it travels to just Palm Springs in June, New York City in July, well, New York's nice in July, and Martha's Vineyard in August. Cost a cool 3.115.688.70. That's all. Bush opposed to blocking asylum for Syrian refugees. Now, what more do you need to know about uh, Jeb Bush? Jeb Bush just said he does not support blocking Syrian refugees from seeking asylum in the U.S. Now, I, I want to ask progressives to call the show, not to have an argument. It's a waste of time. It's bad radio to just argue for argument's sake. Can anyone listening to this show tell me they're in favor of bringing in Syrian refugees and why? I'd like to hear one good argument. What I don't know of one good argument. I don't understand one good argument for this in light of what happened in Paris. Now, of course, I was opposed to it before Paris for logical reasons, but now after Paris, even progressives couldn't come to understand that they're suicidal for wanting to bring in men of military age who are Muslims from Syria. Why would he be doing this? We don't have one caller on that. Okay, that's fair enough. KSFO, Ted, you're on the program. What's on your mind? Yeah, hi, Michael. Um, my thought, you know, the other day when I was looking at the 
situation in Paris. You had all the the military and the police downtown. They're all all with their guns. I think you know if you allow the Syrian refugees to come in, you you don't know who they are. They create a situation of they could easily create a situation of panic, and that panic would mean that you you might need to nationalize the police force, and and then also give Obama another reason potentially to confiscate the weapons. So you're saying you're saying in a convoluted way that you think that Obama is so devious that he's hoping to provoke a nationalist reaction from a militia group against the Syrian refugees in order to, to to declare martial law is that more or less what you're fearing there's no you know he could he could have a well, there's no reason to not not no reason not to fear it from the most devious uh anti-american president in, in history no I, anything's possible with this guy why would he have tipped off the drivers of isis fuel trucks before having the american planes bomb them tell me why he'd want them to run away safely why No answer? Well, the answer is they can come back and fight another day. That's all. Thanks for the call. All right, what would you like to talk about? I may have to move on to talking about vitamins and health today. WJR, Aaron, go ahead. What's your point? What's the topic? Hey, Michael. Um, just read a Free Beacon article, the Washington Free Beacon, where Assad has been buying fuel from the ISIS, the Islamic State. And God. that it's been going on for a while. So how is that possible? What? Well, wait a minute. How is that even possible? If ISIS is opposed to Assad, and uh, ISIS is Assad's worst enemy, why would he be buying fuel from them and fueling his own destruction? Well, there's a link to a New York Times article that mentions the same thing a year ago, which is even well, okay. So l let's analyze this for a minute. If it's true, if it's true, what? No one else will sell him fuel. Is that the problem? So well, he'll even buy it from it. He'll even buy it from his worst enemy. Leafleting their drivers, or why are we telling them what our military strategy is before we go there and attack? I, I think See, it's. I think it's all. Look, the here. questions we're asking indicate a deranged administration. If we, the people, have to ask such crazy questions, it means we have a deranged presidency, doesn't it? I think so, and Fredo. I mean, in other words, if you know what the war is. Who the enemy is, you don't even have to ask such questions if you have a loyal leader of the free world. But but if you have a suspicious leader, a leader who you don't really trust for a million reasons, then you ask such questions because there's no answers to it. Well, I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero. Thanks for making it a bestseller. Now in a fifth printing after two weeks out. Terra Fear hits Germany. Just announced that a while ago. They disrupted a soccer game. Germany-Netherlands game canceled. Paris attacks. Hanover Stadium evacuated after police received tip of explosive attack. Security heightened around Europe as David Cameron, that's a joke, says the UK must cut off the head of the snake. Yeah, very. Uh, then he went back to having a sherry at the club. The sherry Netherland. I will personally push for Syria airstrikes. Another one. Another one. You know, he'll drop dummy bombs on, on ISIS. He'll drop bombs with Guinness Stout in it, probably. No, I mean this is what the kind of leadership we have. We don't even know if he's dropping bombs with with explosive ordnance. It could have it could have a Guinness Stout in it. German Interior Minister match canceled due to evidence of concrete threat. Concrete threat? Were they going to drop concrete on the stadium for safety of the people? Another. See now we're now we're already sissies. Now the whole West is now all, all, all ISIS needs to do now is call up phone, make phone calls. They call every airline in the country, bomb, that's it, flight canceled. Every concert, bomb, canceled. Every dance, bomb, canceled. They get, they broke us already, because we haven't broken them. You know the answer. We need, we need, uh, Mr. Pershing. Old Pershing or Patton is what we need. Instead, we have patent leather. Zero military we have, not the men in the military. I watched the show last night. I had to watch it. I watched it 30 minutes. I had to turn it off. It was called Combat Rescue Helicopter Cruise, and it's an HD. It was unbelievable to watch these guys that we have in the Army flying these medevac helicopters into uh, remote regions of uh, Afghanistan. And you see American men wounded in ways you could never imagine, that you never could understand, I suppose, being a civilian as I am. You know, you see a guy, a wounded warrior, and it looks awful, but you don't see the actual moment of injury 
what happens to these poor men. Their bodies are so wrecked from the shrapnel or the bomb. And then you got our men. They're repeats of... Our men are exactly made of the same fiber as the men who fought in Vietnam, the men who fought in Korea, the men who fought in World War II, the men who fought in World War I, the men who fought in the Revolutionary War. They're still here. Only they're debased by Harvey Weinstein. They are debased and run down by the vermin on the progressive left. But the men are still there. They're mainly, you cannot believe the courage of these guys. And they get them on the helicopter, legs are shot off, faces are blown up, and they have to treat them in the helicopter, triage them in the helicopter, before they get them to a field hospital, a NATO field hospital. And you see it, you know, in real life time. It's unbelievable. you got to chase helicopter, you got to rescue helicopter the lz it's like vietnam all over again you say well it's not really happening we still have the men doing the job by the way and inside inside the flying helicopter i'm sorry to say it doesn't look like harvard it doesn't look like a, a university to me it's very interesting to me that the front lines of combat look very different than the universities do in so many different ways very very different joe on ksfo what's on your mind uh, joe at the risk of sounding obvious, Michael, I think what's going on here is he was never intended for that office. He was never up to it. He wasn't experienced. He had the wrong temperament. And we're now seeing the chickens come home to roost. He's falling apart mentally. But he's, he's been, been voted in twice by morons. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Why didn't? But we have a mechanism in place to remove a moron from office if he's putting the nation at risk. There is a mechanism. It's not impeachment. There's a more direct method, which is for medical reasons. The man's a nut. Why can't we have a panel of nine psychiatrists convened to adjudge the man's sanity and fitness for office? Why not? You know, if a military commander is, is found to be not fit for service, they remove him, don't they? They just removed another combat general, one of the bravest and best we have, an African-American, on trumped-up charges. Another combat general removed by Stalin in the White House for fear that he might do something. So why can't we remove the commander-in-chief if you can remove a, a, a guy like this? I agree completely, but I don't think in the history of the company we've ever encountered this set of circumstances. No, we've <laughs> never encountered an enemy within like this, never. He's a Benedict Arnold, in my opinion. Yeah, and a sick one. He, I, and the man is a sick Benedict Arnold, yes. That is correct. I don't think anybody who's rational could not even start questioning that with the what what the man is doing. When you got a guy like the 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 imbecile of Europe, Hollande, acting tough and making Obama look like what he is, what it tells you everything you need to know. Well, the people are in. Do you want me to? Do you want me to go on with this topic, or you want me to go on to another topic? That he's bringing in Muslim men of military age at the, at a time like this. Instead of saying, you know what, we have to rethink this, let's slow it down. Now, who was the first to say build a safe area for them in Syria, have it protected by the United Nations, and don't let, let them leave? Now Trump is saying what I said. He says build a beautiful safe zone for them in Syria. It's right out of my show. Half of what Trump says comes from my show, for God's sakes. Do you know that? I am so glad that Donald Trump thinks so highly of me that he listens to the show, or I may have one staff member whose full-time job is to take notes from my show and my book. I'm glad to see that my ideas are, are, are being uh, are getting out there. Here, look, bi big, build a big, beautiful safe zone for them in Syria. I said that first. I said it three weeks ago. We don't need to take them in. I said instead of bringing refugees to the U.S., you build a big, beautiful safe zone in Syria. Well, he has it mostly right, and uh, he didn't get the rest of my show, apparently. The, the aide who wrote it down didn't finish the story. I said build a tremendous safe zone, but apparently Trump didn't hear the rest of what I said. I said have it protected by U.N. troops. They have nothing else to do anyway. Put U.N. troops around the safe zone to protect the Syrian refugees. Build a city, a whole little city, tents, houses. Give them hammers and nails, uh, and then they can stay there. And then when the ISIS is destroyed, they go back to their cities. But you don't bring them to America, do you? Unless you want them here. Now, why would you want them here? Matthew on WABC, what's on your mind? 
Yes, sir. Dr. Savage, thank you for taking the call. I wanted to mention that I think it's a good idea right now 